All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this. Whoa, that was some epic music for just like piece of wood plants and cheap light but hey i gotta sell it so in this video i'm gonna show you how i made this uh, all the material that i use uh, why i use those specific plants uh, also, why is it shaped like this? There is a reason, it's not an accident. It's, there's a link between the light, the shadow, and uh, the crawl that I use. But there's one particular reason why I'm doing this, is because of the mushroom island. So here, the mushroom island. So there will be a little bit more mushroom uh, overall, and the mushroom don't need a lot of light. And the problem that I have right now is that light produce a lot of light like around here and it doesn't like spread very well, it's, it's mostly like a spotlight. So I need to lower the, the amount of light that area receives because they are on the top of the rock. So I need to lower the light and keep the, the amount of light for that part. So if I have something around here to cast a little bit of shadow, that will help the mushroom that are currently receiving a little bit too much light. Now, first thing first, all I need was a stretcher, and for that, I call my agent. Okay, so what do you need? Besides a miracle. Wood. Lots, Lots of woods. <laughs> so much wood. This wood is called Chinese Alzia wood also known as the spiderwood, you can find in almost every uh, freshwater store. I picked this big base for starting point since it is heavy and I can connect like other pieces uh, easily after. But first I need to make space. So I need to remove that alkanity bottle and the dosing pump, which I will relocate a little bit later, we'll see about that. At the moment I cannot fit that big piece of wood behind the crumb, so I will need to cut a branch. So finally the piece of wood could fit uh, behind that cram and obviously I need something that just like put a little bit higher that piece of wood so we can see uh, the texture and right in front of the of the cram this is where I'm gonna see like the texture of the wood uh, where I'm gonna put like maybe the, the next couple branch so that main piece is like the most critical part of this uh, the structure overall and if you know me, I really like to recycle myself. So this is the sand that I was supposed to use, um, but I'm not going to because I don't like the, the mix of uh, white and black sand. And since I'm not going to use it, why not just use it like as has like a counterbalance for the, the, the whole piece of this uh, decor because I need something really uh, heavy. <laughs> Thank you. 
The next step was to figure out how to connect the small branches with the main structure. So I had like different options in my head. I always start with the easiest one first and see if it will work. So obviously a nail and a hammer was my first option, but like it just didn't work easily. Um, I didn't really like the way it was going with uh, this plan. So I switched it immediately after that with the real plan that I had in my head. Cut on. <laughs> I, I know that's right. Cut on puff like at $2 uh, in your pharmaceutical store to hold the branches uh, together. But obviously there's a, a tricks for that, the glue. So this is not any kind of glue, it's a special one that bond with the cotton and it dry like super super fast. This is a technique that you see often in freshwater by Aquascape Obis. It's been popular for maybe um, a decade now, like 10-20 years. I believe it started in Asia because like they have a like, really big aquarium culture back there and they build like some insane setup with the cotton and glue it's just mm, magnifique when you see that stuff i'm not sure why this technique never translated really well in the reef community maybe just because the people are not aware of this um i don't know but that stuff with the glue is a really wonderful tool to use to make your aquascape Okay, so now you see me that I put some glue uh, on the cotton and you see like that smoke. So this is indicate that this, there's like a chemical reaction and it's actually bonding with the cotton and obviously with the wood a little bit also. So this is something that can be dangerous. So be careful when you do this, like make sure you have like some ventilation, like open your windows or put some glove or and put some uh, glasses to protect your eyes because uh, that smoke will just irritate you you can see like I tried to pull it out and this was just in few seconds and I'm having trouble to just <laughs> get try to remove that piece of wood it's really really incredible stuff it's not going to go away obviously if I use the full force uh, I can break it but it's really really solid now speaking about the glue there is some very specific type of glue that you need to buy to make sure like it works properly because I wasted so much money on glue like I, I bought maybe I think six or seven type of glue and there's only two glue that really work it was those one and specifically this one because the lepage this one you can find in Canada is basically the I think it's a rebranding of this one so the Loctite 401 is a cyanocrylate glue, like you can, any kind of glue that you find in your store, they're basically the same stuff. Except like this one is different, they, they put something else in the glue and it's very very liquid as you can see a little bit on this one. You can see how super liquid it is. It is. So there is something very different about this glue, I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, but this is the type of glue that I use that work. There's a lot of glue that doesn't work like I love Gorillas Gorilla sorry and uh, like this one don't work any Gorilla I tried didn't work correctly I did it in the bond with like the cotton um, There's no chemical reaction So that was very unfortunate because I love Gorilla in general, but none of them work So I was really surprised and uh, so yeah, if you, you're looking for glue you can uh, actually buy this one however you can only find in a very very small package it costs like, maybe like a ten dollars something something like that like six to twelve dollars Canadian depending uh, so unfortunately a very small size but there's something else so there is a website called gluemaster.com you can see here um, so obviously they sell glue I never tried that glue specifically but this, I have to give the credit to uh, Tidal Garden because I never found this without them. And uh, I never tried the glue, but it seemed to be exactly the same kind of glue that I was looking for. And what is really cool is the, the price of this uh, glue for the quantity. It's like only like $21 and like for eight ounces. So it's really, really cheap compared to like all the competition, compared to the small bottle that I use. I never used that glue, I never tried, but uh, it seemed to work. And you can see like some people with like the wax uh, and uh, it seemed to work uh, pretty well with like uh, the, the sand. Uh, they bond with the sand and seemed to work. So I think this is the actually the glue that was 
myself looking for. So highly recommend gluemaster.com. Everywhere on the branch where there's like a, some internet connection where they, they, they would touch together, I put some cotton uh, just to make sure like it's really, really solid all uh, the pieces together so it like it doesn't move by accident. So once it's done, I look for the overall structure and I try to see like what kind of other small branches that I could like fit with the, the vision that I'm trying to achieve. And don't be afraid to take your time if you're doing this because once it's glue, there's like a really good chance that it will stay that way. So make sure to try different variation like on the, on the fly, like different angle, etc, etc. The reason why I went with the spider wood was because of its wide availability. It's a very common and also very cheap compared to other type of wood. And to be honest, I was supposed to go with another type of wood that was looking really, really great. But due to the lack of the quantity, uh, I just opted for something that, uh, which I will have like way more creativity, uh, more freedom, and just try different setup. Now about our superhero Groot, because after all, this is his kingdom. So I wanted him like to be on top, uh, so he looked like he's supervising the uh, the Rift Aquarium. So I bought Groot on Amazon, and honestly, like there are so many copy on the net uh, with many style, many pose, many shape, many colors. It's really, 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 really fun uh, for like a decoration, since I, I really love the plants in general. But after I put him on the top, I decided to like remove some of the branch. Uh, like there were like too many, and in, it was like in his way of uh, with his face. So uh, sometimes less is more. At this time, I was satisfied enough with the overall structure. But there is one caveat: the white color of the cotton is really distracting, and honestly, it looked awful. But for that, I have a solution. Paint. This is the paint bottle coming from when I play Magic the Gathering back in the days where I was doing some uh, extension on the, the cards. This is ideal to hide the, the white part and all you have to do is to mix the paint until you have a similar color like the wood. Which I later uh, added another layer of color depending on the, the branch uh, color variation. <laughs> Before I start to add the plants, I wanted to make sure that everything will be okay. I noticed I had a little bit of trouble with the height of the heater. It needed a little bit more room under. So I decided to cut a couple pieces of wood that were in the way to, to make sure like I don't have uh, any accident with the heater or other equipment that was just near of the heater. After that, there was also something else that bothered me a little bit. The color of the plastic can. It's always in the way, every time I look at my cram, I only see that can. And I always try to hide the maximum of the equipment so our eyes are always focused on the living thing of the aquarium. And since I had some leftover from when I built this aquarium, 
it was honestly just a good opportunity to use it to cover the the same color as the black acram so it will just camouflage everything like into one kind of piece during the dry time between many sessions i noticed my structure wasn't properly in balance it's often shift towards the front and it always like fell down cracked the, the wood and stuff like that and honestly i just don't want uh, any accident so to counterbalance the center of gravity i stole a rock from my neighbor who by luck had a little box full of rock outside during the winter for no particular reason so i used some silicone from gorilla to hold all this together and i cut a part of my uh, call it like the magic carpet uh, to protect any scratch from the rock to the wall all right now about the plants my favorite part of this build so i bought them in june during probably like the peak of the pandemic i got them from a company called plant collective it's an online canadian company and honestly they have like a really good variety of uh, plants and for a good price if you buy them in bundle so i totally recommend go check them out it's a if you're like in canada and you're looking for air plants go check uh, plants collective but unfortunately i couldn't get all the plants that i wanted at that time because they were all of stock but that's okay since i knew i wasn't ready to build the structure i placed them in my bathroom and please don't judge me with my bathroom and the duct tape it is what it is but in this place there's a little bit of indirect light uh, coming from the window and uh, there's also a lot of hair humidity of course because of the shower which is really really great for air plants the reason why i went with air plants is because of their low requirement maintenance they need a little bit of light but not too much their water consumption is also very low i think they absorb it via the the air humidity mostly but more importantly they do not require any soil so those plants grow on tree blanch in nature and i've seen them in the wild when i was in in the south and and they look honestly really really beautiful in nature now one thing i need to consider is the space on the right there's a little gap and i need really small plants that won't get stuck with a willow blind and before i start to put them on the structure i just wanted to make sure like i clean all the dead leaves that were on the plants so i can easily see how the plants will do with their new environment which i'm pretty sure will be more challenging than my bathroom with the endric light and the humidity that i had so when i build escape i often start with the biggest object first and it's the same thing for the plants my vision was to get the big plants on the back and then just add the smaller one on the front one by one so the trick to hang the plants on the wood there's like different tricks so one of them was to use the wire i bought some wire uh, in metal but um, i really didn't like the the rust that i had just on my hand so i decided to not use them my second option was the the silicone so i tried to read on internet if it was causing any trouble but from the reading that i got it seemed to be okay i think i did a mistake with one or three plants and by putting the, the silicone just on the bottom of the plants usually the best thing i think is just to put the silicone on the side of the plants where there's the leaf and just leave it just like that We all know that plants need some water and obviously I'm not going to use salt water from my aquarium but I'm using the water from my freshwater plants aquarium and this is where I fill the, the bottle and I'm just spreading after that on the plants. So once I have the water in the bottle, honestly it's pretty simple, also it lasts pretty long so all I have to do is spread a little bit on the plants. 
So I know that a lot of you are gonna ask me like, hey, what about the water dripping everywhere? All right, honestly, no big deal. Pretty easy. Done. And I know that some of you are gonna ask me like, hey, what happened to the water that dripping into the aquarium? Who cares? Like, honestly, like, it's no big deal. There's some people that have salt water with tap water directly. Mine coming from fresh water with plants, coming from AeroDI water. Chill, chill. It's all right. I think so. And for whatever the reason, if I have trouble to uh, spray the water uh, on the plants because there's like something uh, going on, uh, all I have to do is really simple. And uh, it's also like super easy for me to just uh, clean like this on the desk and I just put it back, that's it. Now for the lighting part. On the first episode of this series, I saw something very interesting at AKA in the discount section. I saw this light decoration looking really interesting and it was like super super cheap. I think it cost me like two or three bucks. So I saw the potential of it and I just bought it. One year later, I decided to finally use it for this build. But all I wanted was the wire with the light with nothing else. During the process, I decided to cut all the non-necessary plastic piece and just keep only what I need to make it work, which is the battery section and the electronic chipset with the wire. At this point, you probably know me. I love to hide all the equipment, so time to paint it black. I'm still using the same technique with the silicone. I just make it sure that it was accessible for me with my hand when I put it on the back so I can just turn off and on the light. And after that, it was all just a game of roaring the light around the branches. At this point I was almost happy with the result, but there was something missing. I need more light. The funny thing is, one year later, AKA finally offered those light wire on standalone. And honestly, they are kinda cheap, like seven bucks Canadian, just for this, like just one package. But the best part is, they put a, a timer on the light so the light is on for six hours every day and after that it just turned off automatically which is like super awesome so there's no need anymore to manually turn off or on all those lights so it's pretty really cool gadget just by curiosity i was wondering if they will emit some power numbers to my surprise it does when the lights are close together and super compact like here and when I put them directly in front of the sensor. But let's be honest, they are here for just decoration purpose only. During that day, I felt a little bit lucky and I thought, you know what, maybe I could just take some risk. And I literally dip the controller into the paint and just let it dry. If I had to redo this, I probably wouldn't do this again because one of them has a, like just a tiny problem to turn on but honestly, it's just like poker. Sometimes you go all in, you win some, you lose some. After that, I all rewrite the light to accommodate all the new light that I bought.
On the last episode, I told you that there was a, like a reason why I went with a small backlight for the Kido Guo. Well, this is why, and it fit just perfectly. And by the way, if you have any suggestion how to improve uh, this setup, uh, any other uh, idea, like just go ahead, please uh, comment down below. I'm always eager to see your comments. Uh, I'm reading all your comments always. Uh, and uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Like I don't say that very often, as you probably notice or probably not notice. Uh, I don't harass you with subscribe and like and stuff like that. But if you can do it, please do it. And thank you very much. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.